Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing great. I've got a warning about food and I wanna talk about it because I just talked with somebody that I have known for years and years and I'm gonna tell you about his relationship and mine um, to the food industry because he's a produce buyer and I think it's very important that you hear this. But uh, I've been hearing a lot of things uh, coming about in the news with certain crops and one of them being corn and I can't shake this feeling that something's coming in the corn uh, industry because of things that Biden has done with, uh, you know, allowing, like changing the ethanol, the allowance of ethanol to be used in fuel, things like that. And, um, you know, farmers now, first off, just so you guys know, uh, corn that you eat at the store is different than the corn that it was is used in ethanol. All right. But, um, farmers can make a choice, right? If you're getting paid more for corn being used in ethanol, as opposed to corn that you're able to sell at the grocery store, then you will change, right? It's like the difference between table grapes and wine grapes. Totally different markets, uh, all that kind of stuff. There's, there's a lot to it. So I'm also, I, I, I keep seeing things and I'm, I'm a watchman, that's like my gift. I can see things, like I sit on a wall and I can look over and see these different things happening in the world and pretty much put them together, put the pieces together and sort of figure out or decipher what's going on. Um, I didn't really realize that that was sort of a gift. Uh, we all have gifts in life, all of us, uh, until like 2010, I really started to step into that and really try and figure out what that was all about. But um, the reason why I bring it up is because I talked to this uh, gentleman, I hadn't seen him in a long time, and I just reached out to him and said, hey, how's the produce industry? Because I used to warn him way before I had a YouTube channel for anything. I mean, I was talking with him in like 2014, 2015, I think. And I would go into his grocery store before I went to work and in the morning and I would talk about crazy things that were coming in the economy. And over the years, he'd be like, wow, it's just like you said, or holy cow, like you warned me about this a while ago, you know? And he never really truly took full advantage of, of these scenarios when I would tell him about things like cryptocurrency was gonna do this or real estate was gonna do that. Um, but he watched it and he listened and uh, very neat young man. Well, when I texted him the other day, uh, he, he texted me back. He's a like, holy cow, I hadn't heard from you forever. And uh, he knew that I was starting a YouTube channel when I had about, I don't know, 1,000 subscribers. And he goes, I went and looked at your YouTube channel and holy cow, it's blown up, this is insane. And he goes, it's happening, in the text said, it's happening just like you said. Because I warned him about things that were going on with the, uh, the cough cough, let's say, and um, in real time, like it was, it was awesome. And so he called me right away to see how I was doing. And I said, oh, how are you doing? He's like, well, I've moved out of state. And I said, why? And he said, I, I had, to, had to change jobs, unfortunate circumstances, a job he had for like 20, 25 years. He said, but I'm really happy. And he goes, I'm now the produce buyer of a large chain of grocery stores. I'm in charge of all of them. He goes, I'm really making a difference. I'm, he's having a lot of fun. He's getting his creative juices flowing. He's able to do, get into some marketing. Really happy for this guy. Really neat, good American family man. Good man. And I said, how are things going? He goes, it's good. He goes, it's hard to keep up with the other chains. Uh, the problem is people want a certain price for their vegetables and they do not understand uh, what was going on with inflation or the supply chain crunch. And I said, well, what's, what's if you had to pick one thing, that's, uh, this is why I'm doing this video, uh, that you're having a hard time with, what is it? And he said, corn. I said, really? And he said, yeah, I'm having a hard time getting uh, any of the colors of corn. Uh, and the problem is, if I do get it, people still expect it to be, you know, six years for a dollar. And it's hard to explain to people why uh, it's going up. And he goes, not only that, we're having a shortage of it. And I want to warn people about the corn industry because there's a lot going on. Boy, I got ants like running up and down my, <laughs> my little tripod right now, covered in ants. Um, I think, I'm not telling you to go run out to the store and go buy 100 bushels of, or ears of corn, but um, I am telling you that I believe that we are see, coming up to an epic uh, food chain or food supply issue. And corn is a very interesting one because it is in use in everything. Everything from corn syrup um, to, you know, high fructose corn syrup, which is almost just about everything prepackaged. And I get it, there's gonna be a million people tell me how unhealthy it is. We all get that, but it doesn't change the fact that it is in all kinds of food. And if you don't eat it, someone else does. And if they can't get a hold of it, they're gonna go find the food you eat, right? Um, and the other thing that's really important to know is that um, on the futures market, there's there could be a mo massive run up and I'm not, this is not financial advice, okay? If you don't understand futures markets, commodities markets, options, all that stuff, there's, there's a lot to learn, okay? And a lot of money can be lost. A lot of money can be made too. Um, but, uh, 
these large com companies and conglomerates, they do not care what the price is at a certain point because they have to get the actual product. If they do not obtain the actual product, the physical corn, they can't make their Nabisco shredded wheats or you know their, their breads or, um, or, or sorry, grain, all kinds of stuff. You get my point. I don't got a whiteboard behind me. I don't got any you know, notes. The point is, is that I see a crunch coming and I think it's very important that people realize this and understand it. And that's why you should be even more you know, not going out and panicking. I hear people that are going out and buying food on credit cards. I highly suggest you not do that, okay? If, if you start to be wise with your preparing right now and buying some extra canned goods and things like that, maybe you wanna buy some canned corn. Um, uh, but setting it aside uh, with what you have, trust me, every day a little bit helps, a little bit more and a little bit more because we don't know when this is coming. But right now with what's going on with the weather, and, uh, and then with the energy prices, uh, there are farmers that don't even have the money to pump the water to get the water where they used to be able to flow it easily, but, or farmers that pump water to, to irrigate their crops, they don't even have the money to pay the excessive electric bill now. So there's a lot of corn that's not being planted and some of that that's planted where farmers were always hoping or they, they knew that there'd be a little rain, a little you know, um, moisture in the air to be able to keep that crop growing and then they would water on top of that. That's not here now because we're in an epic, epic, climactic point of what I believe is a drought that will end. But right now, for the unforeseeable future, it's not. And so there are news stories of, of crops literally burning. And I want people to understand that. And not only that, if the, the fertilizer shortage is still persisting or um, certain places you can't use certain fertilizers anymore. We, we talked about that, uh, that one video where I had a, a subscriber to the channel, he's a grower, and he says that his main supplier went from uh, uh, one type of fertilizer to another, it was what, a solid fertilizer to liquid. And he goes, I need, I need the solid kind for what he was doing his operation, and it took him some time to find it. If farmers are having this much trouble, then I think that you're gonna see some very epic situations, not only with the food supply, but also the stock market because of the commodities uh, markets, all right? So I want people to be heads up. So how do you do, deal with this? Well, you just buy a little bit of food, all right? Go and shop the sales right now. There still are coupon sales. There's always a loss leader out there where um, grocery stores are trying to woo you in to get your business, and so they'll, they'll literally mark certain things down so low that they make nothing on it. That's when you go get the ads for four different, five different grocery stores and you go to one grocery store for one thing, another grocery store for another, and then you're able to set uh, food aside. So guys, keep your head on a swivel, keep your head up. Be grateful that you see these things ahead of time. Do not fear, do not be in fear. It should be an exciting time that you see ahead and you're getting ready for an epic meltdown that you're going to take advantage of, all right? Because hey, what good is an economic collapse if you're not ready to take advantage of it? All right, guys, that being said, I thank you so much for watching. The Economic Ninja is out.